Hello there. Well, we've got a bitterly cold morning, uh, but weather-wise it was best of a bad bunch, because at least it's going to be dry and there's no sleet or snow or anything else. It's uh, very cold, but it is it's, it's freezing. Um, today I'm just going for a short walk along the Forth and Clyde Canal um, from, from this new bridge here, which has just recently been opened, uh, runs across the Forth and Clyde Canal at Mary Hill. And we're going from here in the direction of Cadar. Um, not as far as Cadar. Um, I'm hoping to find the remains of um, an abandoned uh, mining village. Mavis Valley is the name of the village. Uh, census returns uh, tells me that there was over 200 properties, so a fairly sizable village. Um, I don't expect there'll be anything left of it. I don't think that, I don't think there'll be any uh, houses standing. I'm hoping there'll be something that I can see, the odd little bit of a kind of remaining wall or something like that. Uh, I, I've never seen it before, so that that's that's the, today's goal. Um, I mean, I did have a look at, at the kind of in the area about a week ago, but I, 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 I couldn't see it. I walked past it. In fact, um, I was getting mixed up between. Another area along the side of the canal that I'd previously seen the little bits of kind of walls and stuff, but it wasn't where I thought it was, and I missed a sign pointing towards Mavis Valley. Walked past it, you know. But um, I've had a good look at maps and satellite images, and I'm 100% confident that we will find it. As to what is in there or what is left, I don't know, but um, let's go and find out. When the Forth and Clyde Canal was first built in the late 18th century, it was used to move things like coal and ironstone to places like the Carn Ironworks. It was a crucial part of the Industrial Revolution, and many mines opened along its length. In this map dating to 1858, you can see the village of Mavis Valley. There were very few coal pits in the area at that time. You can see one, and most of the mines that you can see were digging up ironstone, which was the ore used to make iron. You can see four ironstone pits here. In this 1896 map, you can see the appearance of the Cadder pits, number two, number nine, number 15 and number 17. You can also see that Mavis Valley has not yet grown in size. By 1914, we can see that the Cadder pits were producing both coal and ironstone and must have played a key role in the production of iron at the Carn Ironworks, who own these pits and the village. You can see that the village of Mavis Valley has grown, now a whole street bordered by minor rows of cottages. 
The 1901 census lists over 200 addresses. You can catch tantalising glimpses of the village in some old photos, like this one of three sisters in a field with the village in the background. Also in this one, which shows a funeral procession of miners who lived in Mavis Valley and who were killed in the 1913 disaster. Again, the village is in the background, and one of the cadder pits is way in the distance. We can get a closer look at some of the houses and residents with this image of Mary Fairbairn and Elizabeth Little doing some washing. Very far removed from the washing machines we have these days. This photo shows a more complete view of the one main street and the houses lining it. As well as cottages, we can see what looks like either tenements or two-storey properties. We can also see adverts or notices on a gable end. Just behind me is Lamb Hill Bridge, which takes Balmore Road over this part of the Forth and Clyde Canal. Um, I'm going to show you a photograph just now. And the photo was taken right here in 1913. And it shows a funeral procession making its way from St Agnes Roman Catholic Church, which you can see in the photo and which still exists today in that direction. Uh, the procession is making its way towards Lamb Hill Cemetery and St Kentigern's Roman Catholic Cemetery. This is a funeral procession of the 11 Catholic victims of the Cadder Pit disaster. I mentioned the religion because 22 men lost their lives in the Cadder Pit disaster. There was 11 Catholics and 11 Protestants. And each group had their own particular ceremony and burial place. Um, the Protestants, for example, I think some were buried in Cadder Cemetery and some in Lamb Hill Cemetery. Um, and for a long time, there wasn't any one memorial to mention all 22 men. In St Kentigern's Roman Catholic Cemetery, there is a memorial mentioning 11 Catholic men who died. And I think it's in Cather Cemetery, there is also another memorial mentioning the 11 Protestant men who died in this disaster. These 22 men all worked together and they all died together. And it seemed quite crazy that there wasn't one memorial stone mentioning all 22 men. Thankfully, a hundred years later in 2013, a memorial was erected mentioning all 22 men and it is positioned beside the, the, the library in Bishop Briggs. Mining is an inherently dangerous industry. It always has been, and always will be for any miner working underground anywhere in the world. The risks from being in an enclosed environment come from roof collapse, fire, explosion, flooding, and what may be termed bad air, or air that either contained insufficient oxygen for the maintenance of life, or air filled with poisonous gases like carbon monoxide. Scotland's coal and ironstone mining industries have suffered many similar tragedies to the one that happened at Cadar in 1913, which was caused by an underground fire.
We can only imagine the anxiety felt by folk waiting by the pit head to hear if anyone had survived. Wives and mates. Four men did. Rescue was hampered by a lack of trained men close at hand, and rescue squads had to be brought in from Bowhowl Colliery in Fife. It must have taken some time for them to get there, which may have cost lives. Another lesson learned by an industry littered with disasters. Well over a thousand men have died in mining accidents in Scotland over the years. The worst was at Blantyre in 1877, when over 215 men died. And they weren't all men. Among the fatalities was an 11-year-old boy. Two years later, Blantyre saw another underground disaster when 28 men were killed. So no matter how tragic Cadder's disaster was, it was not a unique event. With a reduction in the amount of coal being mined in the 1930s, the village of Mavis Valley fell into decline. The one village shop, the co-op, hung on until 1952, but the village was demolished in 1955. Well, I know that this is uh, where I turn off the canal towpath and head into woodland here. And you know, I'm uh, already kind of pretty excited because I can see a cobbled stone surface. I, as I said earlier, I've not been in here before. I'm not, I don't know what to expect. I, buildings will have gone, uh, but this was a sizable mining village. Um, I, I was hoping maybe the odd little, just clue that there was something here in the woods and the fact that I can see it, a cobbled, a pretty rough cobbled stone surface is as I say pretty exciting. Um, it doesn't take a lot to excite me, you know, some cobbles in the grun. <laughs> um, as I say, I know that from these, the concrete thing just beside me, uh, behind me here, and there's one just on the other side of the canal, I, I, I don't know what these were used for, I, I think I read somewhere that they were used for something, but I can't, I can't remember what it was. Um, I don't remember seeing a bridge or anything in any old maps, but obviously the fact that there's one here and there's one over there, they look kind of modern, if you ask me, they don't look that old. Um, but uh, anyway, as I say, I knew, I knew when I saw them that this was where I turned off, and um, let's just see what's in here. There's another bit of wall over here. When you see photographs, and I haven't really been able to, I think that I've only found one photograph of the village 
um, it's hard to imagine that it was here because it's essentially other than little kind of bits and bobs like that but a wall there, it's, it's gone um, and as I think I may have touched on in um, another video I mean many of these miners rose that formed these uh, villages were, were kind of thrown up with a, a little thought to longevity and uh, conditions were often pretty dire with the, no internal running water or toilet facilities and uh, there's a well outside in the street where you would get your water from but nevertheless these things were made of stone and uh, very difficult standing here to just think that it was here because it has just it's just gone totally gone there's just nothing I'm seeing kind of very vague uh, hints of kind of uh, outlines but it, they're very indistinct I mean obviously this was the main road running through the centre of the, the village with the, the rows of housing on either side of this as, as we can see in the, the, the only photo I, I found Astonishing that everything is kind of gone I mean there's another little bit of stonework just over there Let's, let's just have a closer look at that without getting wet here a little corner of a building there it looks like sort of buff or orangey sort of brick it looks like good quality brick actually or is it? I'm not sure This is a definite sort of outline here I dare say there'll be some sort of stones in situ underneath all this kind of moss and fallen leaves leaves, leaves There's an interesting thing there I haven't got a clue what it is but it's made of stone and presumably part of uh, the building maybe part of a chimney breast I don't know, I'm guessing I haven't got a clue it's nice to see it there one of very few tangible remains of this village Well, um, I'm, I'm going to continue just up this uh, path that was once, as I said, I think earlier, the main road through the village, bordered on either side by rows of uh, cottages. Um, when I looked at census uh, returns, as I perhaps again said earlier, there's over 200 households in this village, presumably over 200 uh, properties are numbered addresses. 
at um, number 193 Mavis Valley um, the Brown family lived uh, John Brown with his wife and five children four sons and uh, a daughter three of his sons perished in the 1913 Cadder Pit disaster a real tragedy for the, that family um, the, the Cadder Pits coal pits, the, the, the mine coal and ironstone from them sort of over there in that direction um, numbers 15 and number 17 pit etc. It wasn't in number 15 uh, as I think I probably touched on that the voice uh, that the um, that the disaster happened uh, and the, the, the fire uh, below ground and it was the fumes that uh, killed all these men. Absolute tragedy. Um, And of course, as if it wasn't bad enough that you were losing members of your family and uh, a loved one. Um, for the, the, some women in the village um, who became widows as a result of the tragedy, they, um, because they didn't have anyone in the household any, any longer who worked in any of the pits, uh, then the owners of the village, the Carden Iron Company, would have turfed them out had effectively made them homeless and destitute. It was a very cruel world back then where there was no, no sort of effective welfare system and um, if you didn't have a working member in your household, you were out in the street. And I think, I, I seem to remember reading of one particular instance where a, a woman who had become a widow as a result of the disaster very quickly married another minor simply so she could retain a roof over her head and she wasn't uh, homeless. It's, it's unbelievable how some of these people were treated. I, I, I suspect that how um, minors were treated um, it probably... Uh, differed or varied depending on who the owner of the, the, the village uh, would have been. But in just in an awful lot of cases you think this is just unbelievable. You know, you've lost, lost a loved one and you're um, looking at homelessness as well. <laughs> um, as I say, I'm, I'm going to go up here just to see if there's any, maybe, maybe a little kind of bits left. Very hard to believe that it's kind of gone here. Um, before doing that, I'm going to show you another photo, and it was taken just back down at the canal. Uh, and it's another funeral procession, uh, because of the 22 um, miners who perished in that uh, 1913 disaster, uh, six lived in this village. Uh, for a while, I, I thought it was seven, I, uh, but um, I suppose I have to go by sort of... Uh, uh, contemporary newspaper accounts that it would appear to have been six of the miners uh, living in this village and um, they would have been taken from here two days after the tragedy and uh, taken in a funeral procession along the canal towards a nearby village hall for a, um, a memorial um, ceremony. And uh, you know, it's just, in many ways, it's similar to the, the other photo taken at uh, Lamb Hill Bridge, where you can see, it looks like not just hundreds, but kind of thousands of people lining the route. And the, while the Cadder Pit disaster was a disaster, 22 men died, as far as the mining industry is concerned, it wasn't unusual. And the, the mining industry in Scotland is littered with tragedies. Um, as I think I probably said in a voiceover, um, the bland tyres was the worst in the, the, the late 19th century with over 200 men uh, getting killed in one, one event. One, not even a man, just a, an 11 year old boy. Yeah. I'm Eddie Burns, take care.